We have a couple choices when we use Excel's uh, time value of money functions in terms of accessing our functions. We can begin typing directly in the function if we know the form of the function, which in this case is equals FV parenthesis, and then notice our input fields pop up. Our rate, number of periods, payment, present value, and then type. That would be whether the payments occur at the beginning of the period or the end. Uh, the present value and the type are both in brackets, indicating these are optional fields. If you don't enter anything, uh, zero is entered as a default. Um, and for the type, zero means the payment will happen at the end of the period. So we could directly go ahead and start typing in our input fields. Or alternatively, after we've typed in, in equals FV parenthesis, we can come up and click on the function button and then we get a pop-up box in which we can enter the arguments of our function. Again, in this case, our rate was 5%. Hitting the F4 key, we want to anchor the row because we always want to come back to row 9. The number of periods will be one period. So we can click on cell A10, and we're going to link to anchor the column. So cycle through till we get the dollar sign in front of the A. Now, since we're talking about the future value of a single amount, um, we'll put in zero for the payment. This would be similar to your financial calculator. Uh, the payment field is for an annuity. And the idea is here we'll go down to present value and we're beginning with one dollar. I'm going to go ahead and put in negative one so we have a positive number returned in the form of our function. We could have also gone ahead and put the negative sign in front of the future value. And then we'll hit OK and we've got our 1.05. If you don't know the name of the function at all, you can come up and hit the function wizard, FX, and you can pick most recently used functions will pop up, or in our case, if we didn't know it all, we go to financial, and we've got a whole series of potential financial functions. We would come down to future value, hit OK, and our pop-up box comes again. And again, our rate is our cell B9, and we want to anchor the row, uh, the number of periods, is cell A10. We want to anchor the column. We're putting in zero for the payment, negative one for the present value, and for the type, um, since our payments are happening at the end of the period, we'll put zero, and if we omit that, that's the default. So we hit OK. We get 1.05. Again, line your cursor up on the box in the right-hand corner. Drag it all the way down, and then we can drag it again across and we've got a future value factor table.